Hey folks, welcome. Today we're going to be looking at two things that are very important whenever you're doing any kind of permanent installation work or any installation work, maybe even if it lasts only a few days, but it's kind of hands off and you're not going to be around it all the time. One of those things is making sure that your system reboots on a nightly basis. And the other one is making sure that it automatically starts up your project when it's finished rebooting. Now these two things may seem pretty easy and I'll show you today. They actually are pretty easy, but they often end up stumping a lot of new developers because they're things we have to do inside of Windows' operating system and they don't really have anything to do with Touch Designer. So I have a quick example here where I have a Touch Designer project called Data Mosh Example, which is an example we've been using for a blog post. And what I want to do is configure one task scheduler entry to reboot my machine and another one to start my project. Now, if you've never heard of Task Scheduler, don't worry, we're gonna take a look right now. It's an application built right into Windows. So to access our Task Scheduler, the first thing we're gonna do is open our Start menu and type in Task Schedule. And we'll see we have an app here named Task Scheduler. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And I'm gonna fill my screen with the Task Scheduler here. I'll maximize it. And by default, you're gonna see this kind of dashboard overview, which is not particularly helpful for us. So we're gonna go right into the task scheduler library. Now by default, you're probably gonna have a lot of different things already inside of this task scheduler library because as you install certain applications, you know, for example, we can see a few Adobe entries here, Dropbox, Google updates. Many applications that you install in your computer are automatically going to make task schedulers options for themselves so that they can check for things like updates, maybe they need to perform some system maintenance. We can see here that we have, you know, Adobe at 5.02 p.m. every day is probably checking for updates. Uh, we see Dropbox is checking for updates daily, Google Drive is checking for updates, and we're just going to add our entry right into the mix here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the top right area in my actions here, and I'm going to see create basic task, and that's what I want to click on. That's going to open up this create basic task wizard and I'm going to give it a name and I like to make my task schedule items extremely obvious because otherwise it's very easy for them to get lost in a sea of other items. So I usually use all caps and I'll call this reboot installation nightly. I'm going to hit next and it's going to ask us when do you want to start this and I want to say every day I'm going to run this task. Now we can give it a start time. In this case, I'll say start it tomorrow. And usually what I do is do this in the middle of the night, even for permanent installations or events. You know, by the time three or 4 a.m. rolls around, unless you're working in some kind of nightclub or, you know, entertainment environment that maybe goes a little bit later, for anything kind of corporate or any generic event, three or 4 a.m. is a very safe time to completely shut down your computer and reboot it. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to 3 a.m. And I want it to recur every single day. So I can hit next. Now it's going to ask me what action do I want to perform. And by default, this isn't super obvious because we don't really want to start a program or send an email or display a message. But technically, the way that we're going to shut down and reboot the computer is actually by using the shutdown command from the terminal. And that technically counts as a program. So we're going to say start a program. And now we get to give it our program or script along with any arguments. So in this case, the shutdown is very easy because we can give it a command line shutdown command. And then there are a few arguments that we're gonna give it. Now in this case, normally you see a lot of these commands all written in one line in the command line. But in this case, when we're adding that to the uh, basic task wizard, we actually have to separate our arguments from the command. So the command is shutdown and the arguments we're gonna use are forward slash R, which is gonna tell the shutdown command not only to shut down the computer, but to actually reboot it and turn it back on after. Then we're gonna put a space and we're gonna type forward slash F, and this forward slash F is gonna force the computer to reboot. So that means things like applications asking if they want to save the current changes aren't gonna stop it. Uh, anything else that's running isn't gonna stop it. This slash F will ensure that no matter what, this shutdown command will engage and reboot our system. And then finally, if you like, you can add a forward slash T, which gives it a timer or a countdown. And in this case, I usually like to do something like 60 seconds. So that way we are going to shut down the computer in 60 seconds. 
it's going to be a forced shutdown so no application can stop it, and it's going to reboot after it's finished its shutdown. Perfect, so that's all of we need here. We can hit next. It just gives you a confirmation here and you can hit finish. Now we can see that our reboot installation nightly is inside of our list of items here. And you can actually see another test one that I created just before recording this. Now it's important to know that once this is set up, it's always going to run. Every day at 3 a.m. it's going to run that command. If for some reason you ever needed to stop it or pause it, the best thing to do is come into the task scheduler, find that item, right click and hit disable. When you see the status is set to disable, that means even if it comes around to 3 a.m. tonight, it's not going to reboot my machine. Now, once we have that set up, what I like to do a lot of the time is make sure it's enabled, but also just do a quick test run. So what you could do is right click it and hit run, but be careful because if you do right click it and hit run, it's going to shut down your computer and reboot it right now. So you may want to wait till we get to the end of the process, set everything up and then give it a test run. Now we've got our reboot set up, but what about actually starting back our application when the computer's back on? So the way I like to do this uses something called a batch file, or you may have heard other people refer to them as bat files. So to set up our bat file first, we're actually gonna go back to where my test project is, and I'm gonna open up Sublime here. Now you can do this in any kind of text editor or code editor, there's nothing special about Sublime, that's just the code editor that I like using most. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna essentially put our command line commands that we want to trigger that are going to start our application inside of this batch file and then what we're going to do is tell task scheduler hey once you're turned on and once you're logged in and ready to go go in here and run this script which is going to contain all of the automations for getting my project started now i like this method more than actually just pointing the task scheduler right at my toe file because this gives me a lot more control to do things like insert time delays start multiple projects, and do a lot more kind of complex automation in an easier to control environment. Now in this case, because we're only really starting up that one application, it's gonna be a pretty simple one, but there is a nice trick that we can use here. So the first thing that I like to do is insert a timeout, because oftentimes when my computer starts up and right when the user logs in, it takes maybe a minute or two for Dropbox to open or any of the applications on that, you know, computer to get up and running, and I don't really want to just start my touch designer project right away. So the first thing I'll do is in all capital letters, put in a timeout, and then I put something like maybe even 180 seconds. This way, my computer starts up, the user logs in, it launches this script, and this script is just going to wait for about three minutes to let everything stabilize. Now, once that's done, now I want to actually go ahead and start my application. So in this case, I'm going to type start, which is the start command for starting an application. Now what we have to do is actually put two sets of quotation marks. Now you could actually put a name in here because essentially what this is doing is telling the start command to name the window of the application. So you could call it, you know, touch designer app. In most cases, I find it's not even useful to end up naming the application. So I just put start a set of quotation marks just to make sure that argument is taken care of. And then we need two more arguments. Now, you could point this start command straight at your toe file, but what I often like to do and what's a lot safer is to point the start command first at touch designer's executable, and then tell it using that executable, open this project file. So the first thing I wanna do here is open up another session of my Windows Explorer. And I'm actually gonna go over to this PC. I'm gonna go find my derivative folder here. And I'm gonna find touch designer, bin, and all the way near the bottom is going to be touchdesigner.exe. So what I'll do is I'll click in the header bar so I can get this full path here. I'll copy it. And then I'll come back to Sublime open another set of quotation marks because a lot of the times there's gonna be a space inside of your path and we wanna make sure that the spaces in the path don't confuse the command line command here to think that maybe it's two arguments instead of one. So usually with paths, I always put them in quotation marks. So I'm gonna then paste C program files derivative touch designer bin and then I know inside of the bin folder, it's named touchdesigner.exe. 
Then outside of that quotation mark, again, I'm gonna set another two quotation marks. Now in this case, it looks like I've gone to a new line, but that's just the wrapping on Sublime here. So this is all on the same line. Now I can put in the path to my actual project file. So in the same way, I'll go back to my project folder. I'll grab the path here and I'll paste it in. And then I know inside of that folder, it's called datamoshexample.to. Now for the case of this test, what I'm gonna do is, is turn the timeout really low because I'm just gonna run this to show you that it works. So I'll, I'll say maybe 10 seconds of timeout here. And then I'm gonna save this file. Now, the secret of making a batch file is actually really simple. All you have to do is put .bat on the end of the file name. So in this case, I wanna save that inside of the same project folder. So I'm gonna go into my test project folder and I'm gonna call this something simple like startup.bat. Once I do that, you can see we have this startup file. The type is a Windows batch file. It even has a nice little icon here. And then the final thing in this is to just finish making our task scheduler item that's going to run this startup. So I'll go back to task scheduler, create a new basic task, call this something like start touch designer, hit next. Now, when do I want this task to start? when I actually log into the machine. So this is not gonna be a daily event, although you could make it a daily event, so that way you restart maybe at 3 a.m. and you start the project at 4 a.m. But what I usually find better is to set it to when I log on. Just in case somebody logs off and logs back on, it'll then restart your project successfully. So I'm gonna set this to when I log on, I'll hit next. I want to start a program, I'll hit next. And in this case, instead of putting all of our command line stuff in this interface, all we have to do is point this program slash script right at our batch file. So I can browse. I know that's in my desktop project here and I want to go to that startup batch file. And then I can hit next. It's gonna give me an overview and I hit finish. And now essentially my whole reboot cycle process is finished and automated. Now we could see this testing. I'm not gonna run the reboot installation nightly because that's going to stop the recording and shut down my computer. But I can show you that if we run our start touch designer, a command line's open. It does a little countdown of 10 seconds here, which I could skip if I wanted, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a second here just to make sure it works. Once it's done, that command line disappears, touch designer starts up and then lo and behold, it's loading our project. And once that's done, it's going to be loaded. Perfect. Now there are a few other options that you may want to know about. So once we have this start touch designer task scheduler item, we can right click it and go to its properties. And there are a few things that you may want to do depending on your project. So for example, you may want to turn on run with highest privileges if there are some kind of admin type things that you're doing maybe from Python, that could be a useful thing to turn on inside of conditions. You may want to make sure that you know, we, we don't really care if about the power state, so you may wanna turn off the power state conditions. Inside of the settings, you can do things like, you know, if the task runs for longer than three days, you can stop it. If the task fails, maybe try it again, you know, in a, a few minutes. Usually I find though that just the basic setup and the basic task scheduler item is usually more than stable enough. So I hope that helps you guys set up your permanent installations or even short-term installations that you may not be able to stand next to at every minute of the day and make sure they're on. These are things I do all the time, creating reboot scripts and batch files to start up my projects when the computer turns on, and I hope that helps you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.